Okay, this series is going to just be uh, stuff that I've may or ha have already used, but I didn't. I've I've actually screenshot the or screen captured some of the processes I went through to get to a specific uh, sequence of a composition, a specific thing, and I've probably used the music before. But I haven't showed the some of the processes I go through, so I'm just these are gonna. There's no particular order here. It's almost gonna be just kind of random because I'm just gonna do these in the, in spare time. Um, so these are all actually pre-recorded as I was going through, and I didn't do it all in one shot either. I actually would play with the sequence and then take breaks and then put you know how people usually write. They don't usually sit down and write everything in one shot. So uh, yeah. This is a series of the of takes, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll go ahead and narrate this one. I had intentions for this, and let's listen to it first. Uh, with bad sounds. Okay, I I had a little intentions for this right away when I wrote the melody out. I usually use notation when I write melodies out. I kind of shape it with the little uh, um, slur lines, staccato lines. So what, what I initially thought of right, when, right after I did this was a group of three uh, flutes, or you can use two flutes and a piccolo, or two flutes and an oboe. Um, but just doing this kind of parallel chord movement over more of a pedal point. Oops. But I see this is actually my actual process is, you know, so kind of arpeggiating up to the D minor chord to the five dominant chord of D minor, then a par uh, then parallel, uh, parallel chords down, parallel chords down. You hear, hear that effect? It's really cool. And it's often as people rare use this so rarely anymore, but I still use this all the time. Um, Everybody from Tchaikovsky to John Williams to whoever, whoever does a lot of orchestration loves this kind of thing. So it's basically parallel chord melodies, okay? Most of the time, stuff like the diminished chord, like that. The one, the, uh, the minor chord, the diminished chords, uh, the uh, five chord, these are usually the most dominant. Um, well, mo do most dominant chords I was thinking of to, to really pound home that D harmonic minor kind of sound. Okay. So lots of arpeggiations of just the D minor chord. That's your, your focal center. So, and so. I don't want the melody to take too far away from that. Uh, don't worry about. I wasn't worried about parallelism, um, though. Technically, uh, we could look at that. We're not going to get into technicalities like that. Um, this is literally the process I was going through as I was writing out this melody. Okay, as I after I had the melody established, creating mm, par again a parallel melody. And you'll notice that most of my choices right here are either the one chord in, in D minor or the diminished chord or the dominant chord. Something that contains that, uh, you know, that which would be a C sharp and D harmonic minor or D minor. Lots of arpeggiation of specific chords. And I should, should say diminished chords. Um, Lots of, because there's more than one in D harmonic minor. So um, that was literally my thinking right here after I had the melody and had listened to it a few times. I was like, well, I'm going to throw a uh, notation playback is terrible, by the way. The, the samples aren't that good, but I like Notion. But uh, so, yeah, this is basically what I did was looking at this. Well, what chords? And then right here is where I really want to point out. I just, I, I've started to think more about the uh, kind of a half cadence on the five chord. Okay, so. And this is what I refer to as like shaping your melody. You you have a, a kind of like a repetition of certain things and a kind of an ending of the melody or, or half ending, half cadence. So let's listen. So 
So I kind of shaped the melody in the way that I wanted it to be presented. So at this point, I'm I be I've I'm actually ready to you know start messing with instrumentation, and mind you, some of this I did over the course of a few days because uh, you know I, I don't have sometimes there's not a lot of time. I just put flutes one, two, and three. We'll just leave it at three. That's the most you can't get any more equal than that. Um, so uh, as far as instrumentation, three of the same thing. So um, I decided maybe I could throw, let's try out string groups, okay? So initially I thought, well, since this, this is most likely going to work best over a kind of a pedal point kind of feel up until you get up until the point where you get to the five chord. Okay. So I was like, well, how can I make it interesting in terms of, uh, the, uh, it mostly being a pedal point and the, and the parallel chords being the main melody. So, I'm probably going to have to split this video in two because YouTube, I'm not sure if they allow uh, videos past 20 minutes anymore. So I'll link video number two after this. So yeah, I just thought of bump bump. And that's, you know, it's the same rhythm as the, uh, as the, um, actually, As the, as the flutes, but it doesn't matter. It's you know I this I was literally playing with the ideas here. So um, and so I was like, well, that's a pedal point D to D, just jumping the octave. Okay. Okay. So apparently I was happy with that, and I've I think I've actually played this sequence before in other videos, and maybe the uh. Well, here I started to just, to just displace the uh, the pedal point with some uh, well to make it interesting with some syncopation instead of always just being on the beat or something. So um, uh, uh, on the end of you know and such, um, and then did a very typical uh, five one uh, move there just in terms of the tones and then repeat of bar one and so I basically just worked with the uh, lowest and first the pedal po area that's going to just be dealing with the pedal point so so basically probably was just thinking here possibly repeating the first bar or doing something to to work us towards that, uh, um, work us towards that uh, five that half cadence there, which will be the five chord. So uh, the A major chord and then A dominant chord. And I decided since I'm on the A there, I don't want to do that again. So so I moved it back to the uh, pedal point and then decided I'll go to the A, um, the A here and just kind of arpeggiate through maybe root, fifth, root, downwards. You notice we're just giving each chord, each each area of the pedal point and the and the and the switch up to the dominant, just some kind of motion. That's all. That's all I was interested in now instead of just staticness. Okay, so I'm not going to fill. In, I probably never filled in rests where where. Uh, maybe I did. Okay. Sometimes I don't because I know it's at the end. So I apologize. Notation sounds don't sound that good. So I I did it uh, export this out and for a sample library. So uh and then redid it. So I I wrote Piz out on the violins and violins too, and I remember why now because I wanted them to just accent certain aspects of that uh of the uh, the flute the parallel flute melody so it's kind of a cool effect I actually learned that from uh, I think it was John Williams actually or maybe it was Rimsky-Korsakoff I can't remember which one either way it doesn't matter it's 
it's more likely been done a hundred thousand times. But so what I was, did was kind of just basically accent parts of these parts of these. Uh, I remember doing this, um, this specific sequence, and you know I didn't write in divided or non-divided. So I, um, right now, let's just not worry about that. Okay, this can easily be, uh, see how it accents that specific. Uh, just that one part of the arpeggiation, but, but kind of like that. So it's kind of a cool effect. Um, sounds way better. And um, when we when I've mocked this up, it sounds way better. So it's just kind of accenting certain aspects of that melody. That's all it's doing. So really, just playing certain chords of that melody. I can't remember who I learned this from. You learn so many orchestration tricks that it doesn't, you forget where it came from. But it's most likely been done way before John Williams, so I'm not going to give him the credit for it just because of that aspect. Most things have been done. So basically, all I did here was just kind of continuously accent parts of that flute parallel melody. Okay, um. Probably looking at it, looking at what I wanted to possibly accent. It was probably very, it was probably, I probably kept it very similar. Yeah. And I'm from, except here. Now it's kind of going, tut, tut, which is kind of cool. And this is literally how I work through ideas. So see how it's just accenting various aspects of the uh, flute melody, the parallel wind flute melody. Now just realizing the uh, that this is actually exactly the same as the previous bar in terms of where to, in that accent. So you can uh, uh, so I can basically just copy and paste it. Um, Consistency. You don't want you don't want things to be always continuously changing. The just consistency. I mean, like to breed familiarity. So um. Okay. So here I'm still on the doing partials of that. Trying to. And then just accented the last chord, I guess. And so, yeah, these are little th little tricks you could also use with your sample libraries too, to just make things more interesting instead of st static chords. You notice everything's basically motion, even though even though the backing is actually either a pedal point or part of that uh so remember um you could do stuff like this with string groups this giant leap of uh it's intentionally done for oops i made a miss yeah see this is part of about when you're actually coming up with ideas for something you could do these giant leaps like this anyways with piz you know that's not a big deal so I remember throwing in a, uh, a harmonic here, and I believe that's exactly what I did here. Yep, kind of like when nothing else is happening. Usually, when nothing else is happening, that's a good time to throw in stuff that. Uh, so we just stuff that gets busier. I meant when something comes to rest, the melody came to rest. So let's go ahead and okay. So that's what I had so far, and and it's kind of funny trying to narrate the uh, your line of thinking. You 
I pretty much know what I was going to know what I'm going to do before. But, well, that and I know it, I already know the piece because I've already done it. But uh, so I decided to stick, you know, one lone guy. I should have put doing that same uh, high note since, you know, a fluke can reach that. that. So I decided to add him to the uh, high note factor. And we'll call it the high note factor. That's the, te the technical term. Come on, think. Yeah, sometimes with these notation programs. Okay, so there we go. So, so I'm not calling out every specific chord in that melody and stuff for, for a specific reason. This is not a harmony lesson. I'm just showing you how to present ideas in parallel melodies and how what I would specifically did with this. So I next started with the violas and actually decided I'm going to do a little run, or run on D minor. And, and you know... Uh, Pass through the pass through the fifth note, flat five, very common, very common note, and maybe end on the flat six. So, so little pa little passing tone, a uh, chromatic passing tone. So, and then go ahead and I went ahead and stuck. That's the little run, and then stuck it. Wanted short. Short, short notes so without getting into details about types of short notes string players can do we're just going to stick a short note reference on there okay and so that there we have it okay okay definitely needed to be much quieter though so I just gave myself a little mental note on that for some reason that didn't sound very quiet um yeah, there we go. Let's stop. Okay, there we go. Motion, motion, motion. So what I did was, what I do with stuff like this is use it, copy it, and with runs, I what I like to do a lot of the times is stick little answers, like call, kind of like a, kind of like a response to the pro to the previous run. So you're not just doing the same thing over and over again. Um, another, uh, another uh, sharp five or flat five, even though I put sharp on there. Um, so we have a little bit of uh, chromaticism going on, and now of course passing through it. Um, And then the raise seventh degree, since I'm thinking about harmonic minor here. So, so there we go. There's, um, so yeah, it's. We're creating a lot of motion to support that. Uh... Okay, well, I'm going to explain what I do here. Um, I'm re repeating the first line. Okay. That part. Repeat. Now, most likely, it's like a call response call and then close out. So that's the way, that's usually what I'm thinking since the, the whole thing's closing out here. So I came up with a way to close out that run, just like the melody came to a close out. And most likely, yep, I'm using the uh, flat five, a very common thing to do with, with chromatic passing tones in minor. 
So you get a little chromaticism there. Um, so, it's obviously I'm thinking about it for a second and listening in my head, so I'm... Now, I probably want to stick that uh, chromatic, uh, chromatic uh, kind of flat five sound. Okay. And then pass through it, you know, actually just natural it there. Um, so there we go. There's some kind of closeout I decided on and with the run. So and then decided, you know, of course, consistency, all, all short notes uh, without getting the specifics again about the types of techniques. Just, um, just indication that it's to play very short and crisp. And there we go. You hear a lot of that flat five in there. Okay. So we're, I was almost done at this point because I didn't want to add any more winds and stuff to it, but I wanted to, that little gap before the harmonic right there. That part. I was like, uh, and I actually waved to it there. That's funny. Actually, I was like, well, I got to do something with that gap, and I knew right away this would work. Um, you can take yourself a little, fill in that little uh, gap area with a, a little uh, harp glissando before the harmonic hits. So when the melody comes to rest, it, you know, a little bit more busyness with it from everybody else. Uh, stuff going on so so I decided to like mm, gotta bridge the uh, staves here Go ahead and move that up to the top stave and of course with harps you have to define tuning too because if you know pedal harps they have to tune a specific way to play a specific scale or glissando so So I decided on a harp tuning. Let's see, what did I decide on? There's two ways you can do it. Um, C sharp. So did I just decide on the C sharp and keep it? Yeah, okay. So it's a melodic minor uh, tuning. So there you go, um, and then of course you don't want it that loud, you don't want the guy to just come booming in, so. So we have our little filler there. Um, so there you go. Um, I'm not gonna, I didn't bother throwing in the, uh, the rests and everything, so, and I left it as is because I'm, you know, I was just recording the, the process of creating this. So, um, and for my personal sake, I'm not uh, worried. About, you know, maybe I did. Oh, no. Actually, I stuck in a different instrument. I didn't even notice I was doing that. Okay, yeah, I, I already know what I'm going to do. I'm just on that on that harmonic when I have that little bell ting, the glockenspiel. <laughs> kind of like a ting. Bell ting, technical term. We'll just tell glockenspiels they make bell tings. And yeah, no, that sounds kind of quiet. For I, I'll just turn it up a smidgen without changing the dynamic. So I found this melody was done pretty much. So uh, I 
at least this part, and you know, it depends on what it goes into, but for this specific part, it was done. I mean, this is all I needed to really do to it for me to be satisfied that, uh, so, and I just took you through the process of kind of how I think when I'm writing this. I always use notation, so when I'm writing. So we'll probably do this for many more videos. Um, I don't know what else I added on here. Probably nothing, but I'll double, double check to make sure. Because maybe I'm just looking it over. Um, this was more for personal reference when I did this, when I'm recording these uh these screen captures. So, yeah, I'm just basically looking everything over and say, do I need anything else? And no, probably not. Um, yeah, so at the end of this, I'll play the actual sequence that I use, that I actually used with really, really good samples inside of a uh, DAW. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 